to give us an update on the disruptors rallies, we are now joined by Fadzai Mahera, who is from the Citizens Coalition for Change. He is the national spokesperson. Fadzai, good morning and thank you so much for making time for us. What went wrong here? Well, ZANU-PF can never win a free and fair election in Zimbabwe, which is why we continue to see them uh, attempt to unconstitutionally ban or try to ban the, the opposition, the Triple C, from campaigning. Uh, ZANU-PF knows that their candidate is completely unelectable and has a poor record in the country, which is why they are so afraid uh, of the Triple C making inroads. The Triple C has mounted a massive campaign, which actually started a year ago when we started penetrating rural areas areas. zanu Pierth is sensing defeat and so they are trying to abuse state institutions to stop our rallies and we've consistently said they won't succeed. Uh, Mr Mnangagwa has demonstrated beyond any doubt that he's worse than Robert Mugabe in acting unconstitutionally, failing to reform, failing to comply with the SADC guidelines uh, on elections. You can't simply silence the opposition because they are uh, fighting for change. We, we don't see it anywhere uh, in the region. And so obviously we condemn their unconstitutional conduct. But the good thing is that nothing can stop change whose time has come. Okay, what happens to the rally that's supposed to take place tomorrow? Well, obviously, our lawyers are currently in the High Court. They instituted a an urgent review against the unconstitutional ban by the police. Uh, but what we know for certain is we, we aren't going to stop continuing to mobilize for change. Currently, we've got our members in each of the 36,000 villages throughout the country so they can ban us from a stadium or... <laughs> What they can't do is ban us from the hearts of the people. Zimbabweans want change. 49% of Zimbabweans are uh, living in extreme poverty with a complete indictment on Mr. Mnangagwa's regime. Because they're suffering, they're ready to vote overwhelmingly uh, for change and vote, vote against the dictatorial, violent, corrupt, mafia-like government of Mr. Mnangagwa and Zanu PF. Yeah. Um, but Fatai, um, also though, um, the MOP is clear that when you want to have a gathering that you, you should submit that application seven days before the event will take place. In that statement from um, the police, the police say here that you only make the submission on the 6th of July, yet the event is taking place on the 9th of July. So isn't it the disorganization from what? your end? Absolutely not. Uh, the, the police aren't telling you the full facts. The full facts are that we uh, gave the police notice over seven days ago, where we notified them that we're actually going to conduct the rally at Chipadze Stadium in Bindura. Uh, the police obviously, uh, you know, acted unlawfully to ban us notwithstanding and asked for a resolution from uh, Bindura Town Council. We obtained that resolution. And a few days after we obtained that resolution, the town clerk said that the stadium is being renovated, which is completely completely untrue because that council resolution wouldn't have been granted uh, if, if it was under renovation. The town clerk, obviously acting under the instructions of ZANU-PF, swiftly moved in to put in tipper trucks just to try and block our rally attempts. And so we acted well within the ambit of the Maintenance of Peace and Order Act. We gave the police the seven days notice required. In fact, this is the fourth rally just this week that has been banned by the police. There's a clear coordinated uh, pattern. Uh, the, the rally Rally in Chivi was banned. We had a rally in Chikombezi, another in Chirezi Central, all of which uh, complied with the, the seven day notice requirement. And each time they give a flimsy excuse no, Zona PF is using the stadium, which is a lie, or there's a state occasion uh, a couple of kilometers away, again lying. Uh, the other day we actually saw uh, when Mr. Uh, President Chamisa was touring Mashingo Province, Energy Mtori, one of the, the uh, leaders in Zona PF actually firing gunshots bringing uh, truckloads of ZANU-PF youth to try and disrupt our rallies. We've seen violence. We've seen, uh, you know, our members intimidated continuously in Chivi, uh, in Chirombezi, in Chikombezi, in uh, Chirezi Central. Uh, we saw villagers being, uh, you know, harassed again by the police. So this has got nothing to do with disorganization on the part of the Triple C. The Triple yeah. C has actually complied fully with the law. It's ZANU-PF that has the problem. And the important point to note in this regard is that the Constitution is supreme. Section 67 says we've got the right to gather uh, as political parties in groups. The constitution is, is supreme. And we also see that in section 
51, we've got the right to demonstrate. We've got the right to freedom of assembly, freedom of expression, sure. freedom of opinion. Why isn't the constitution being complied with in this country? That's the question to ask. Okay, so you say the submission was done within the seven days as stipulated in the MOPA. Another part around Correct. the so-called disorganization of the Triple C is, for instance, on the nominations of your candidates, 10 of them heading to court. They missed the deadline there as well. They were supposed to have submitted their applications by 4 p.m. and now you're taking um, them to court, the nominations, uh, the nominations actually... committed to court. That's actually not the correct uh, position. We filed um, nominations for our presidential candidate well within the, the time limits and complied with the Electoral Act. All 210 uh, of our MPs for first past the post, their nominations were filled in time. It's actually Zonu PF that's trying to challenge the nomination of our candidates. So we aren't the ones coming to court saying we're out of time because we weren't. If we were out of time, the nominations for all 210 of our MPs would simply not have been accepted. More fundamentally is the attempt to fraudulently and uh, you know unlawfully try and institute and impose double candidates, which is something that's being done externally. Uh, they forged our Triple C logo. They tried to forge our signatures. And we're taking that aspect to court. And that if someone forges your logo and someone acts fraudulently, that's not disorganization on your part. It's criminal conduct on their part. But currently, as things stand, we've complied fully with the Electoral Act. All 210 uh, of our candidates were actually published in the Gazette as being duly nominated. So you can't speak of disorganization there. We've got a 100% success rate when it comes to nominating candidates uh, for the National Assembly. For part. So is it not true that you have 10 members who are taking this matter to court? No, it's actually not true. We were well within the 4, 4 p.m. deadline and actually, like I said, it's Zanu PF trying to sue us to try and say we were out of out of time, but that's not correct. Like I said, the Gazette was published and all 210 of our candidates were um, on the list. Okay, what's Every the next step for you considering also... By a triple C. Sure, what's the next step now for the Triple C, also considering that we don't as yet have a list of accredited observers and part of observing elections is also the pre-election period to observe what exactly happens before the elections take place? Well, the Triple C is going to continue to do what it's been doing for the last 12 to 14 months, which is penetrating all villages, all towns, all cities and provinces and mobilizing to win big for change. We know that we cannot outsource the struggle for change in Zimbabwe. We knew from the get go that we would face these obstacles because we know how ZANU PF conducts itself when its back is against the wall, where they're staring defeat in the face. The Afrobarometer report, uh, the Brent Hurst survey, the Sabi strategy group survey, all point to a, a Nelson Chamisa victory. So they've got this internal data at hand. So we know that they're not going to stop at anything. This is a complete repeat of 2008 with the opposition, notwithstanding these odds being stacked against it, were able to mobilize big uh, and ensure that a big turnout for the vote was achieved. And they managed to win uh, that election. That is precisely the strategy that we're going to continue to adopt. And what we implore, uh, and as far as SADC is concerned, we have a SADC treaty in this region. We've got SADC guidelines on elections, SADC protocols. These must be observed. It's, it's really a litmus test for SADC. Do we believe in our own internal principles or don't we? Does Africa care about uh, free and fair elections or doesn't it? But what is beyond any doubt is that Zimbabweans are ready and mobilized okay. for change. We Thank are you so not much for going time. to sit back and wait uh, for ZANU PF to, to run roughshod for us. Thank you. Thank you so much for your time. Fadzai Mahera, there is uh, the national spokesperson for the Citizens Coalition for Change in Zimbabwe.